Hello, everyone. Welcome to Applied Crypto Analysis. Uh, my name is Cengir Tezcan. I am from Middle East Technical University um, from Department of Cybersecurity at Informatics Institute. So in this first lecture, I'm planning to give a few basic definitions, and then I will be talking about some historical ciphers and how to break them, which will be pen and paper methods. Then I will talk about some uh, cipher machines like Enigma and how to break them. Then we will move on to modern ciphers and uh, mention how we can perform a brute force attack to modern ciphers like block ciphers. And finally, I will talk about the big O notation, which probably most of you are familiar, but uh, when we are breaking ciphers, we need to talk about uh, the complexity of the attack, how much time it requires and so on. So we will be using the big O notation most of the time to measure this kind of uh, complexity. So let's start. So let's first give a, a few definitions. So sometimes we hear uh, words like cryptology and cryptography, and probably we are not sure what the difference is. So let's define what the cryptology is. So of course we can give a very long definition, which would be take a few paragraphs, maybe in Wikipedia and so on. But if you want to give a short definition, I will prefer this uh, short version and uh, cryptology is about secure communication in an insecure channel. So we assume that this channel is already insecure. Everybody can eavesdrop and listen what we are communicating, but we still want to communicate in a secure way. So cryptology solves this problem. But of course, this definition is not uh, enough because cryptology also solves a lot of other problems too. So then what is cryptography? Cryptography is about designing secure crypto systems. And cryptanalysis is about analyzing or breaking the crypto system. So these are actually related areas because in order to design something good, you have to know how to break them. So this is the main idea. And this is why this course is about cryptanalysis. In other words, analyzing crypto systems. So uh, as you can see, the definitions, initial definitions of cryptography and cryptology were different, but nowadays, cryptology and cryptography are used interchangeably. So it doesn't matter which word you use. So cryptography, as I told you, solved uh, a lot of problems. Uh, one of the solved problems is the privacy of stored data, messages, and conversations. So as you can guess, we do this by encryption. So once we encrypt uh, messages or conversations or uh, uh, data on a disk, uh, we provide privacy. So but actually, these will be the crypto systems that we are going to break most of the time in this course. So uh, if we can break them, then the privacy is lost. So this is the main idea. Another problem that we solve is the integrity of stored data, messages, and conversations. So this is done by cryptographic hash functions. So if the stored data or messages is modified, its integrity will be broken and cryptographic hash functions can be used to detect this. So when you attack cryptographic hash functions, the uh, idea is to uh, modify the data, but still uh, the integrity would not be broken. So uh, an attack to a hash function would be, uh, the idea would be something like this. Any modification you would do to the data would get unnoticed. So that is the way you attack a hash function. So we also have user and data authentication. This is also solved by cryptographic algorithms. This can be done by public key algorithms, or it can also be done by authenticated encryption or message authentication codes and etc. So when you attack uh, in this kind of uh, scenarios, you will try to be impersonating the person if it's a user authentication. Otherwise, your aim would be to modify the data, but it will still pass the authentication. Another uh, thing that cryptography solves is the transaction non repudiation. So, this can be done by digital signatures. So, in this scenario, the attack would be to uh, sign something that you are not actually allowed to sign. So, but most of the time, we will be focusing on the first part in this lecture. Our aim will be to see the security of uh, block ciphers or stream ciphers. And we will be uh, talking about some uh, 
known, most known attack techniques like differential cryptanalysis and linear cryptanalysis. But if time permits, we will try to also talk about the combination of both, and then we will move on to uh, newer techniques like impossible differential cryptanalysis or inverse subspace attacks and so on. So here's a picture. Uh, again, it is not the full picture, but it is still a big picture. So we can see how the crypto works. So for confidentiality or privacy, we solve this by encryption algorithms like uh, symmetric key encryption algorithms like block ciphers or steam ciphers. You can also use public key encryption algorithms like RSA or Algamo. Also, we have authenticated encryption algorithms, which also provides both confidentiality, but also data authentication. Again, we can also provide data authentication by message uh, authentication codes. And uh, in crypto, you should be careful because we always use the abbreviation MAC for message authentication codes, not media access control. And uh, integrity is provided by cryptographic hash functions. Again, for the entity or user authentication, we have digital signatures, message authentication codes, zero knowledge proofs, and so on. Finally, digital signature solves this origin non repudiation. So let's start by defining what a crypto system or a cipher is. This is important. Cipher and crypto systems are actually for us the same words. We will be talking about uh, the, uh, the system that we are going to use for encryption and decryption. So let's see what's the crypto system or a cipher is. So we first define what the plain text is. Plain text is what you want to protect. It can be a file on your computer it can be a whatsapp message that you're sending or it can be your voice when you are talking on phone so a crypto system is a pair of algorithms that convert plain text to ciphertext and back ciphertext is the encrypted version of the plain text and ciphertext should appear like a random sequence so you have the encryption algorithm you convert your plain text to ciphertext and you send the ciphertext through an insecure channel and uh, you don't mind if somebody captures the ciphertext because for them it will look like a random sequence and they won't be able to get any information from about the plain text from the ciphertext but only the person who has the ability to decrypt in this case we will be using cryptographic um, sorry secret keys so the person that receives the ciphertext you want to send the message initially will uh, decrypt the message and obtain the plain text again uh, again, this is a crypto system or a cipher, but in Turkish, uh, the word cipher is actually used in a wrong way. Uh, some people uh, think that password and the cipher are the same thing in Turkish, but it is not okay. So when you're entering your password, it is password, not a cipher. So let's see how the historical cipher works and uh, Let's see a few examples and uh, see how we can break them. Historical ciphers are mostly pen and paper methods because you don't have the technology to use anything else. So you will be using the pen to perform encryption. So key and the crypto system should be easy to use in practice. So anybody who knows how to read and write uh, should be able to perform encryption and decryption. These are mostly based on letter substitutions. Most of the time, empty spaces and punctuation marks are removed from the cipher text to avoid information leakage. So let's give the most famous and basic example, uh, the scissor cipher. In the cipher, every letter is replaced by a letter, some fixed number of positions k down the alphabet. So it is used in, we know that it is used in ancient Rome and it was uh, supposedly invented by uh, Julius Caesar. So, uh, of course, I said K positions down the alphabet, but in some other uh, places, it can be defined as K up the alphabet. It doesn't matter because uh, if we think about English alphabet, going two uh, down also means going 24 up. So it doesn't matter how you look at the picture. So let's, for this course, we assume that we are going down the alphabet. As an example, I choose the uh, key as two. And let's say that we are going to encrypt the plain text cybersecurity. And the, in this case, the cipher text will be as follows because if you look at the English alphabet, uh, C is the third letter. If you go two down, you will end up with A. 
and so on. So we have to also think this in a, a circular way because uh, the B is the second letter, so you cannot go two down. So when you go two down, you will go at the end of the alphabet and write it as Z. So it is a very simple method. Any actually uh, elementary school kids can discover such a method and most probably uh, invented themselves anyway. So let's look at a few notations to understand why this is easy to break and how we can uh, think about the big picture. We use the notation P for plain text, C for ciphertext, and K for key. And I use the capital letters to represent the space they can cap, uh, represent. For instance, in our case, the plain text actually in this algorithm uh, consists of single letters. So the plain text space is actually 26. There are 26 letters in the English alphabet. Since any letter is uh, replaced by a letter, the cipher text space is also 26. And as a key, key space, you can choose 26 different keys, key, keys here. So your key space is also 26, okay? So this is actually the problem because of course, if you are choosing K equals to zero, then plain text will be equal to cipher text, which wouldn't give you any security. So there are actually 25 possibilities. So this is the weakness of the cipher because anybody who captures this cipher text, if they assume that this is uh, encrypted by Caesar cipher, they can just move every letter, one letter up in the alphabet and check if it uh, looks something meaningful. If it doesn't, they repeat the process and in at most 25 uh, repetitions, you will obtain uh, cipher security in the worst case scenario. So key is easy to guess. The key space is too small, which is 25. You can do 25 many trials by using pen and paper. You don't need a computer. And also if you even capture one uh, plain text and the corresponding cipher text, instantly you know the key. So these are the uh, weaknesses. So how can we uh, strengthen the system? We can introduce more complexity in the encryption algorithm. So in this case, we can uh, do something like this. This, this. this is called a fine cipher. In order to increase the key space, in this case, we use two numbers, A and B, as the key and encrypt, uh, encryption function as follows. When you take the uh, letter as input and K, which is in this case A and B, two numbers, uh, you perform the encryption as follows. You look at the number, uh, that uh, this letter actually represented in the alphabet. You multiply it with A and you add B. And in this case, it might be something bigger than 26, but there are 26 letters in the English alphabet. So you take modulo 26 and you write the result down as your encryption. So here's an example. Again, we are using English alphabet. I chose A equals to three and B equals to one. So, uh, I represent letters by counting from zero. So A is zero, B is one, and C is two. So in this case, C is two, and your, your encryption algorithm is three times two plus one, so which would be seven, and modulo 26, seven would be seven again. So this means that H is the uh, seventh letter if you start counting from zero. So this way you perform the encryption, and this is the ciphertext. As you can see, this is more complex. The person who captures the cipher text need to perform more operations to uh, obtain the plain text as an attacker. So again, yeah, I use 26 because English uh, alphabet has 26 letters. Well, in Turkish, it will be 29. And in different uh, languages, it might be different. So again, uh, plain text space is 26 because we have 26 letters. The cipher text space is also 26. But key space is now bigger because we are choosing A and B as an integer, which is less than or equal to 25. So we have uh, 26 times 26, which is 676 possibilities for the secret key. So this is of course in theory because in practice, uh, it, does, it is not this much. I mean, even uh, there are a few trivial examples. You cannot choose A and B equals to zero, then you, the encryption would fail. Everything will go to A. Uh, or if you choose A equals to one and B equals to zero, P would be equal to C. But there are also uh, some other problems here. Uh, let's see how we decrypt the 
message when we receive this ciphertext, we again convert them into the integers and we perform this operation a inverse times c minus a inverse b modulo 26, which would give you the p. Uh, so if you're not familiar with uh, modular arithmetic, a inverse means the number when you multiply it with a, it, it is equivalent to one modulo 26. So uh, the decrypting person who knows a and b also knows a inverse and performs this operation. So question now is, does every number has an inverse in modular arithmetic? And the answer is no, because a can have an inverse in Zn, uh, in our case, it is Z26. If and only if the greatest common divisors of A and N equals to one. So uh, the, not every number is has a greatest common divisor with 26 equals to one. And if you look, you will realize that there are actually 12 possibilities for A, so that A uh, greatest common divisor of A and 26 e e equals to one. Thus there are, uh, 12 times 26, which is 312 usable keys. Again, anybody who can use pen and paper can try this many possibilities and break the system. Of course, with computers, this is in, in microseconds, but we're talking about historical cipher. So a person can also break this by brute force attacks by trying every A and B. And let me show you an example when uh, A, is chosen such that the greatest common divisor with 26 is not one. So in this example, I chose A equals to two. And you can see that greatest common divisor of two and 26 is actually two, not one. So in this case, A doesn't have an inverse. Uh, so what can be the problem when we perform encryption in this way? As you can see, I again encrypted the cipher security plain text with these parameters. But as you can see, the letter E and the letter R is encrypted to the same letter J. So the person who obtained the ciphertext, uh, when they try to perform the decryption operation, they would not be able to guess uh, what J is going to be. It can be E or R. So there are more than one possibility. This is why you have to choose A in a uh, meaningful way. So again, key is easy to guess. And uh, this is the weakness of the system. Somebody can perform a brute force attack. 